for those that didn't already know, I'm an ambassador for Fujifilm New Zealand. And one of the perks of that is I sometimes get to borrow gear before it is released to test, review, to give some feedback on, to train myself up on so when it comes time for the launch date, I know a bit about it and can answer some questions for people that like to ask. One of the, <laughs> I guess, another perk of that job is after playing with it, I sometimes get sent questions, a questionnaire kind of thing to fill out to answer about my time with that camera, just so Fujifilm can also have that information, that knowledge to, to share with its clients, its customers itself, and feed on and carry on for other future cameras and just for the greater knowledge of everybody. This video is gonna be about me answering those questions. Question number one. So you ended up with a pre-production X-T4 to try it for all of lockdown instead of just one week. For those that don't know, New Zealand was in a lockdown of 30 days. Well, it's, sorry, it's been about 32 days now, and just because of the coronavirus. So we've been closed up and I haven't been able to go anywhere um, for just one week. I actually didn't know I was only allowed the camera for one week. Okay, so this needs a little bit of a backstory. So I got this camera right before the lockdown started, and I thought, because we were meant to be in lockdown for 30 days, that I would do the 30 days of isolation with the X-T4 challenge. You can see that series up here if you want to check that out. And I didn't know when I started that, I was only meant to have the camera for seven days, not 30 days, so that was a lucky coincidence that let me keep it. <laughs> so you ended up with a pre-production X-T4 to try out for all of lockdown instead of just one week. How did you find it in general? Actually, I think a key part of that question is it was a pre-production X-T4. There are definitely a couple of bugs when it comes to reviewing, which makes it a little bit tricky, but some things are definitely as are. You can, you can, and normally they're pretty obvious. Some things will just crash, like if, like a camera never has before, or you go to do a feature and you just, it doesn't do anything and you click on it. Like just not all of the computing operational system of the camera is loaded into it just yet. But that aside, I did love it. Were the new features a big jump of the X-T3? To be honest, I guess the most obvious ones from the T3 is that screen, IBIS, and battery life. I think no matter who you are, those are the three biggest obvious ones for me. Some other things like just the speed, the bigger eyepiece, there are a couple of extra perks. But if you just considered IBIS, battery life, and screen, I think no matter who you are, no matter what you shoot, those three features alone are a massive jump. Did you find the battery life significantly longer? more or less than the rated 500 frames. 500 frames? I didn't know it was only rated for 500 frames. See, when I first get a pre-production model, I get no specs, no information, nothing all about it. And so the first thing I did was line it up next to my X-T2 and an X-H1, and I did a time lapse, taking a photo every 15 seconds, full charge cameras, completely empty memory cards, just to see how many shots I would get out of that battery. And from the XT, like the old W126S battery, I'd get like that 360-ish kind of mark, kind of similar to what they were rated. For this one, I got closer to 900. But then in real life, when out and about shooting, like say when I did wildlife or sports stuff, I'd get closer to 1,500, 2,000 frames. I was only charging it maybe every second or third day, if that, and I was doing video plus 800 frames a day, so I don't know how they come up with their ratings of 500 frames. Because I was getting far, far longer than that. What was your favourite thing about the camera? Favourite thing. Okay, when it comes to favourite thing, I've only been doing video, really, or vlogs, for this year. I only started the 1st of January kind of thing. And having that combination of... So my main lens for that is the 10 to 24. So having 10 mil with its stabiliser, plus the IBIS, plus the digital stabiliser for vlogging, took my steadiness of walking around and talking to that level where I could use that footage. Every time I wanted to walk and talk before, I would just stop because it was never steady enough for my preference. So I'm going to guess that IBIS is my favourite feature, but I love the flippy screen actually, being able to see myself. Nah, IBIS. IBIS was my favourite. Did you do any color grading with the videos or did you just use the film simulations? So that's an interesting question because I was trying to do one video, one photo a day and upload them each day, speed was definitely a massive key for me. So I didn't get into color grading because honestly I don't know too much about it. So the film simulations were fantastic. And if, oh, well actually if you'd like to tune in probably for my next video, I'm gonna be doing more C-log color grading and comparing it to the film simulations and straight out of the camera. Speed is definitely a factor for me, but I'm gonna wonder and learn about color grading in the next video. So check that out. I guess I can answer that in far more detail for the next one. But I just shot everything in a classic Chrome, 
normally with a daylight white balance and a minus one on both the shadows and the highlights and that's how I'm shooting right now actually and it gives me this look and this color and for speed straight out of camera I was really happy with that look was there anything you didn't like about the camera when you go to plug in a microphone this is all very connected you pull out the little flap on the side here for video you plug in your microphone and if you're filming yourself you spin that around to face you however this panel here covers up your audio levels for when you're recording so you can't see the audio levels while you're filming yourself and that's kind of normally how you do your sound test but so what you've got to do is actually just tuck that back like that and then go out like that and you can see it far better for the first little while I didn't do it I just accepted it was a pain in the butt and while I love that flippy screen I don't know if I love it more than say the X-T2, the X-T3, the X-H1 flippy screen it definitely is very handy in a lot of tricky situations however so when you're filming yourself it does not flip around to show yourself until you get to about there so there the sh video the what you see on the screen is still upside down I don't know if it's going to be like that in the final release but quite often I was filming at a low angle looking at myself like that and the footage on that screen was upside down where I wanted it to be straight on looking at me not flipped and so you've got I couldn't view it like that I had to have it like that also while walking around and vlogging this scared me that I was going to knock it like that and break it however for rougher situations I also love being able to close on itself it has that completely sealed so while I didn't like the screen I liked it just as much and overall I, I think it's probably as good as the older screen styles no better no worse new pros new cons the one thing I didn't like and this is a definite and I don't think it's going to change is the memory card slot hold on so the grip has this little lug this lump just here and when you go to put a memory card into it I need to sh I'll show you in some close-up b-roll there's another little lip on the other side and as you go to drop in memory cards and you push it in like that your finger cannot push it in like I got it in like that and then same on the other side there's a little lug opposite this bit of a grip that stops your finger going in all the way and more than once I'd go to push it in and fire my card out into the grass eventually you just learn to push it in fiddly and finely like that but I think if you had bigger hands and if that is like that on the full production model it's a learning curve it's it, it's not a deal breaker by far because it's definitely got two memory card slots which is awesome but I don't know why it's got that little lug opposite it just to stop you pushing your finger down far enough to get your memory cards in and out that I found was a bit of a pain in the butt especially in the top one with this bigger lug here it, it was really hard to like you can see memory card no it went in that time but memory card doesn't go in unless you really get in there you can't push it in like that honestly I was actually thinking about making a whole video dedicated to things I don't like about the X-T4 and I started writing a list and that port the microphone being covered up by that jack there and you're not better to see the screen the screen not flipping to there and that memory card thing were all I could come up with I love every single thing else about this camera the weight, the ergonomics, the quality, the speed, the whole lot, being hyper picky. The, and the flippy screens are 50 50. The memory card's just saying you've got to learn, and it might not be the same in the full production model. It's not that big of a deal. I think I love just about everything else about this camera. What were the key lenses you use for your project? So, when it's referring to my project, it's talking about my 30 days of isolation challenge. Like I said, if you want to check that out, I'll leave a link up here. My key lenses I used were the 10 to 24 f4, the 50 to 140 2.8. I used a mix of the 23mm f2 and the 23mm to 1.2. I love the f2, which is what I'm filming this with right now for video because I feel the video focusing on it is so smooth and fast and I love it and it's very light and small. However, for photography, I really love the 1.2, especially if it, like in the landscape and that um, for that blurry background environment. To add that Instagram, that professional kind of look, that 1.2 is that nice little notch up. How did you find the IBIS for stills and for video? That's actually a bit of a tricky one because this is a pre-production camera the ibis for stills was only working with some lenses and unfortunately most of the lenses i needed it with it wasn't working with yet so i can't give a good review of the ibis for stills however for video it was phenomenal like having that 10 mil is just real steady on its own then check on the stabilizer real steady check in ibis and then the digital stabilizer as well and it was walking talking capable where normally I'd stop and talk for vlogging just because it wasn't steady enough for my pickiness. So Ibis, for what I could use of it, was phenomenal. What was the most difficult challenge of your project and how did the X-T4 affect this? 
Actually, the hardest day by far was when I had to shoot rain as a subject on a real blue sky, sunny day. That Partly it was me. I was just, I think, maybe exhausted on that day, but it really beat me up trying to work out how to do that on my own. Like, there was no assistance or anything. And the reason I bring that up, actually, is because I ended up doing half in half out of water using a fish tank and previously when I've done that before with this fish tank and you have the old screens that fold out like that you can't fit them with the screen fold out the back you can't fit it in and still see the screen we're on the t4 because I could go like that and then put it in there I could take photos like that still see what I'm shooting and shoot that half in half out of water shot while I'm still going to see my shots at this weird angle I can't see through the back screens normally just because this is like half submerged so that little flippy screen I know it's a small thing but that actually saved the day and turned what was such an emotional roller coaster into a great photo what was your favorite shot of the project and how did the XT4 affect this I've got two favorite photos from that whole series first of all was the black photo personally it's just to my taste I really like it and it's, it's got a little, lot of little bits of me in it the next is actually the tree photo so I've wanted to get good at taking tree photos for a really long time and because this camera has not launched yet I had to shoot everything in JPEG because there's no raw support for it yet and tree photos are such high contrast and really need a lot of massaging to get the full potential out of them I feel from raw photos that I didn't think I'd be able to do it just off JPEGs but that one photo all those photos from that whole series were edited in JPEG but that tree photo more than anything to get such a dynamic but still contrasty image from a jpeg blew my mind actually i was really impressed just from jpegs it's like man i can't wait to start playing with raw files on this camera and, and doing more than just being locked inside my property for 30 days what type of photographer would you recommend the xt4 to a better question would have been what photographer wouldn't i recommend it to Okay, so I'm a landscape photographer and I love it. The image quality with the, the Fuji glass plus the, the battery life, the size, the weight, everything for someone that likes to hike and get landscapes, phenomenal. Macro photographers, having their low light quality plus the lens quality again plus Ibis, Ibis, amazing. Portrait photographers, the Fuji color plus Ibis, incredible. Sport photographers, the focusing, the tracking, the frames per second, the bigger grip, incredible. Street photographers, the discreteness of it, incredible. Documentary photographers, like, I can't think of who this wouldn't suit. And I'm not just saying all that because I'm a massive Fuji fanboy, because I am a massive Fuji fanboy, but I truly believe I can't think of a single situational photographer that this camera wouldn't absolutely excel in. But I guess if you have any questions about this camera or any of its features, let me know down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. If you could like, share and subscribe, I would really appreciate it, but otherwise, we'll catch you next time. Yeah.